Okay, can you guys hear me now? I just did all that and didn't know you couldn't hear me. So tell me if you can hear me. I moved my mic while ago and I think when I touched it, it's sensitive and it turned it right off. So let me know if you can hear me. I know there's a little bit of delay. Let me know. Well, I don't have to uh, have to do it again. Can you hear me now? Oh, you can't hear me now. Okay. See my mic thing. Okay, you guys should be able to hear me now. Because my little thing is flashing over there. Okay, good. Good. Well, let me start over. <laughs> oh, technical issues. Anyway, welcome to the Live with Sandra V show. This is episode number 44. And as you know, my name is Sandra Van Sickle. I'm going to fly solo for a little bit. Kenny V is on his way in. Um, he called to say that. Well, we didn't think he was going to be able to make it, but he called to say that he would he would be here, but a little bit late. So he'll be here to harass us, as usual. <laughs> but as you know, we are here on Tuesday nights from 7 to 8 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. And our goal is to inspire, educate, and promote others in the industry that share our same vision. And I know I, I um, can see a lot of you already here, popping in here, and I know that you do share our vision. So before I get started on tonight's project, I'm going to ask all of you to please hit that share button to let others uh, know that we are here because quite a few people said they wanted to join in tonight. And I know time can get away from everybody and we forget a little bit. Um, and then say hello to each other as you come in. I know a lot of you know each other personally and virtually and somebody may pop in that has not popped in before. Say hello to them too. And of course, let us know where you're coming from. I always like to see where um, everybody uh, lives and, you know, to give them a shout out. One day, I think I'm going to start uh, putting up a map and just stick pins where everybody's from. That would be kind of fun, wouldn't it? Anyway, welcome everybody. I see we have Amy. I love you too, Amy. You're my, my niece and you're here every week with me. And of course, uh, uh, Kim Shagnon, welcome Shim. Kim, we just came back from a great upholstery meetup in uh, High Point. I tell you, I said that a lot of us came out there uh, together. Some of us were strangers that we've never met before. Some of us have met virtually and some of us have met in person. And I may cheer up a little bit because I felt like we all came away as a feeling like we were part of a family. And so thank you, Kim, for organizing that. And I'm really looking forward to um, joining in next year because I hope it's an annual event. So thanks, and some of you out there joined us too. It was a great time. Uh, but anyway, so Anne from Michigan. Hey, Anne and Joanne Weberding, how are you? It's so great to have you here tonight. And of course, my brother David and Carol, you can hear me. I hope you got a good internet tonight. Um, you're from Virginia. And who else do we have here? Um, of course, my daughter Teresa. Hey, Teresa, I saw those uh, stockings you're making out there. Okay, I hope I don't miss anybody, um, but as we go along tonight, I'll stop every so often to say hello to all of you. Again, hit that share button. Okay, well tonight's project, I'm going to move this out of my way because I will get distracted, I promise. I'll turn it over to Ken when he gets back here. Um, anyway, as you all know, uh, tonight's project is this cute little Ani, and I love it. Um, and... I'm going to go a little quickly tonight so we can get through it. Um, but this little awning is so versatile. It will fit into an enclosed area. And what I mean by that, and if you saw the promo video, I had another, I had walls on each side. Let me unclamp this. Hang on one second. Um, and Gina Slit, I saw you just pop in too. I can't see all your comments because they're a little tiny on the screen, but uh, let me move this over. So this little awning, like I said, is so versatile uh, because it will fit, like I said, into an enclosed area. And what I mean by that is if there is a, a kitchen uh, sink, um, a window over a kitchen sink and you have cabinets or maybe in an office between bookshelves or a kid's room or playroom or whatever, 
uh, and even in a shower or tub stall. We had one of these um, years ago in our uh, guest bathroom in the shower stall. And people would come in and they, they would make so many comments out of it because it looked like a cabana. And so, and to make, uh, to put them, put this balance into an uh, enclosed area, all you need is to have a tension rod like this. And I think, oh, I'm afraid to let that go. I hope it doesn't topple on me. Um, you know, these little tension rods that you can purchase. And if you need a longer one, you can certainly, you know, sometimes they come into a, a little bit larger size, like an uh, inch, inch and a quarter, something like that. Um, but you'll put them in the pocket here. And so they'll go between the wall, the cabinets, or whatever you have. And then you can put another tension rod on the very top. Now, you can also place, uh, install these uh, um, awnings in a, over any window. You can easily do that by using a, um, let me see if I can turn this a little bit so you can see the side. This is one of Ken's walls, his demo walls. If you take classes from him, you get to hammer into them. But as you can see here, I have a utility rod up top, but you um, can use a, I call it a stash rod. It's a, a rod that's very slim, similar to this one here. This is a tension rod, but the sash rod, and they, they can be mounted very close to the wall as well. But you can use um, a utility rod, and that one, the projection is probably only about an inch, inch and a half. And then you can purchase these brackets. I didn't take the sticker off of them yet. Sorry about that. But you can use these decorative bookshelf um, brackets that you can buy at a hardware store. Now I got mine at Home Depot. Because you know that's where Ken likes to shop. <laughs> Me too. Let me push it back over. And, and they come in different colors. I mean, you can get them in silver and white. Uh, and this one was like a little bronze. And then all I had to do was... I left, you do want to have a rod of some sort um, in this pocket as well. And you don't have to use the tension rod, but if it's going to be wide, if you don't have something going across, it will sag a little bit. Uh, but these brackets here, um, and here's another, here's another large uh, white one on the bookshelf. You can see where they have a little hole here. And so all I did for tonight's purposes is I stitched a little, um, a little, tiny micro cord on there just to tie th just to tie through the hole but you could certainly put a stitch in there um, and if you did use a micro cord you could, of course I didn't trim it because I wanted you to see that I had it through there and so just hold it nice and taut so can't you see this even over a garage door or, um, if you want to work with some outdoor fabrics having over a little outdoor uh, if you have a window on your porch or outside wouldn't it be so cute uh, I think so. I love it. But anyway, and the, what's great about these brackets too, and even the ones I have on here, you can change like the projection that you want. And you can see this is probably about a, oh, I don't know, maybe six, seven inch projection. And if you felt like you wanted a, a, a long one, you can turn these brackets uh, the opposite direction and use that as well. So you can see how um, versatile they are and how you can place them over um, virtually any, in the, any window, okay? So, all right, let me get this out of here. And, uh, oh, one more thing too. If you wanted to, you could place grommets um, in the corners and you could get the flagpole um, holders and you could place those in there because they go up at an angle. And then you could get some kind of a pole or, or a, another pole that would go down in there. And then maybe, um, I think some of those flag poles have a little, uh, it's not a fleur de lis, but you know, like an arrow looking, uh, I'm going to call it a finial ending, a top on it, and pop that right over um, the, the grommet and hold this in place too. I, I like that idea as well. Now, some of you may have uh, done, uh, made some awnings like this before. If you have, let me know and post some pictures sometimes because I'd like to see them. Okay, let me check here, and uh, I'm going to put this on the floor, because I don't need it. And I'm going to say hello to, I said Janet's here, hi uh, Janice, like I said before, and Ruth, 
and and Janet too. Hey, Janet. Janet was on the uh, at the upholstery retreat with us. Okay. Let me put this on the floor very carefully so I can use this table. This is Ken's job, um, and he's not here. It's kind of heavy. I don't want to drop it on my foot. I should have showed you the back of it because he's got it all rigged up with piping for his installation classes. Okay, Whew, that's out of the way. All right, well, um, before I get going on what supplies you need, I just wanted to let all of you know that, you know, the, the one that I will be uh, showing you how to make obviously will have the scallop bottom. But you do not have to stick with a scallop bottom. You can certainly um, make one that has the bottom is flat. You don't have to scallop it out. Or if you get really creative, you can cut it off. And I'll tell you at that six inch mark. Um, and you can... Um, you can cut it off and add maybe a flat little banding along the bottom with little pleats in it. Or you can leave it flat and you can do things. Let me see if I can uh, hit the right button here for you. Or you can also, you know, use um, of course any fabrics. And here's a real pretty, you know, linen that we're all used to. And how about if you have the bottom instead of having it scallop, that you put some pr pretty braid along the bottom. Um, you could add trims of all kinds. I mean, little pom-poms. Of course, you know I love pom-poms. And I love this piece of trim. You've all seen it before. Um, or if it's in a bathroom. Or uh, even, like I said, at the beach. You know, using something with a little, some little beads. You just really use your imagination with these. You know, And if you have a striped fabric, you could certainly take the striped fabric and, um, you know, cut it out. You know, just cut out some of the bottom edges in between the stripes and give it that little, um, I don't know what do you want to call it, a um, uh, circus kind of look if you want to. You know, so Kenny V just walked through the door. Yesterday was his birthday. So I told him that you'd be here to harass us. <laughs> okay, so are you going to watch? I'm going to give him the iPad. Um, before I do, let me just say hello because you'll start to harass everybody. Um, and Janet said, yes, she's going to make one of those for her basement door um, to her work open for business. Yay! Hey, Kathy Tucker and Sandra uh, Costa. Okay, I'm going to turn it over to Ken because he's going to start uh, watching the... Um, but you, I think you're going to have to sit over there for me. Okay. So, and get, that gives you some ideas of what you can do with this little awning. Okay. Of course, I, mine was a little beachy looking because I love the bright colors. All right. So, the first thing that um, we're going to talk about before we get into the construction part is what do you, what kind of supplies do you need? And obviously, you need things like, um, you know, your straight pins and your, let me get my basket around here. Get my basket. Uh, the things that you're going to need are some straight pins, and you're going to need some buckram, or you could uh, use some um, an extra little piece of lining, or even some um, maybe something a little bit stiff because we're going to make a template for the scallop bottom. A six-inch ruler, and we all know who this is. Where's mine at? Well, I can see this one across the room. Kim's poster. Um, scissors, of course, a fabric marking pin, you'll need that. Thread to sew with, you'll need a, a tape measure. And tonight I'm going to be using uh, what we have in our workroom, it's called beaded weight chain. And now uh, you may not have beaded weight chain, but if you have a little piece of string um, or what else could you use? Or even, you know, or even a, a fabric uh, tape measure, you could use that. Oh, uh, no, not really. You would probably want to use a piece of string um, or beaded weight chain. And you'll see why in just a few moments. And, of course, your fabric. You're going to have your... Let me get this here. Your 
um, your face fabric and again you can choose any fabric if it's outdoor you can do outdoor fabrics or canvas um, you know whatever you'd like Let me cut this off here and then if you can add a cord along the bottom you might want to think about adding adding a uh, choosing a fabric that coordinates with your uh, your face fabric and Ruth says she's got a can uh, can ruler. Does she? <laughs> okay, Ruth. <laughs> Ruth uh, might be getting another one. She, I think she is. I think Ruth's coming for some training soon for installation. Um, and you will want some if you're going to have the cording. You're going to want some um, some cord. Um, I use this cotton cord. Let me change my view so you guys can see what I have here. Uh, I have uh, this cotton quarter inch cord and if you want to make your smaller you can certainly do that and here's a, a closer up look of that beaded weight chain that I um, was talking about and I'm making sure that I get everything for you guys uh, let's see what else and also your lining now your lining um, can be face fabric if you want to you could self line it or you could use uh, like a this is a uh, luster sateen a cotton sateen lining that I place on the back of mine you can line it with a solid color say it's outdoors you could you know pick a coordinating color and line it whatever you'd like to do and it, I guess it all depends on where it's going to go and of course you are going to need um, your hardware your your um, your rods or your brackets okay now the first thing that you're going to want to do is to measure your window okay and when you measure window of course I have pen and paper close by so you can write it down if you're like me the minute you measure it you turn you forget so write it down okay so the, now, of course, if this is going to go between, going to be encased between um, two walls or bookcases, whatever, then you're just going to measure in between and write that down. Uh, if it's a regular window, uh, you, of course, you're going to measure, you know, molding to molding. Uh, and if you want to go out a little bit on each side, that's totally up to you. But the uh, measurement coming down, um, you are just going to take your tape measure and you're going to put it up. I can't see the top of the window here, but um, you're going to run it up to the very top um, of the window. Or if you decide that you want to go over the window, maybe one or two inches, go ahead and run your tape measure up like up the window. And then once you do that, decide how long you want your window treatment to be. And this little treatment, um, it, because it has this face that slopes down, and then I have on the bottom, um, it falls down, um, the drop is like about six inches. Okay, so if you put this up to your window and you decide that, you know, you want the balance to stop about here and then it's going to fall down six inches or maybe you know you won't only want it with the six inches to fall right about here, then um, you know, you know, you back it up the six inches to know where it's going to start to waterfall. But anyway, run your tape measure up, decide how long you want it to be, and say that you um, want it to be fall down at um, 18 inches, okay? And then you're going to add in your six inches for that drop along the bottom where the scallop is, and then um, so your that will be 18 plus um, 6 is 24 right yes it is <laughs> okay and again then you measure how wide so write those measurements down you want 24 the one I will be working on tonight is actually going to finish 24 by 24 because it's easy for me to show on my table okay so once you do that, um, then you will cut your fabric out. Now let me put all this aside. Now I have already pre-cut everything so that we can keep it rolling tonight. 
You gonna get it all finished? I hope. I hope so. I'm. I'm, I'm hoping. <laughs> One never knows, right? Okay. And I wrote my notes so I can stay on task. I get excited, and and I uh, I sidetrack a lot. Okay, let me move this over here so I don't hit it. Okay. I'm gonna do this here. Okay, so you just go with me on the 24 by 24. Okay, pretend like yours is 24 by 24. And what you're going to do is cut your face fabric uh, one inch, one inch wider than what you want your finish width to be. So my finish width is going to be 24. I have cut my fabric at. Um, let me see if I got this right. So I have cut my fabric at 25 inches. And like I said, I want from the top down, I want 18 inches, and then my pocket will go there, and then I will have my six inch drop. So that equals 24 as well. But I'm gonna cut my fabric an inch, um, a, a, an inch more, because I'm gonna have a half inch seam allowance on the top, half inch seam allowance on the bottom. I'm gonna have a half inch seam allowance you know, all the way around. Okay. Any questions on that? Well, uh, you mentioned uh, 25, but then you didn't. That, that includes adding your inch because yep. you added an uh, uh, inch for the pocket plus six inches. So that already equals 25. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Yes, yes. I am. I am jumping ahead of myself. Exactly. My um, my finished width is going to be 24, and my finished length is going to be 24. But when I cut, I'm going to add a, an inch, uh, a half inch on each side, all the way around. Okay. Well, when you went through, I'm not nitpicking, but okay. you said 18, and then an inch for your pocket, and then another six inches below. I don't want people to get confused. Okay. Because that would equal 25 before you add your inch. That is true. That's well, 18, 90, 20, 1, 2, 3, to 4. And then I'm going to add my inch on the top, inch on, half inch on the top, half inch on the bottom. So that will be 25. Okay, so you're not adding anything in for the pocket. The pocket mm -hmm. is part of the six. Yes. Okay. Okay, right. the pocket is part of, yes, thank you. Sure okay, thank you. Yes, the pocket um, is basically going to be flat. And the, the pocket on the in down below and the pocket on the top are, are um, already added in to that measurement. So I hope I didn't confuse anybody. Any other questions on that? No. Um, there's a couple more people came in, but nothing real. Okay. All right. So I have cut this 24 by 24, my face. And of course, um, I... Excuse me, 24 or 25? I'm sorry. I'm going to... It's 25 by 25. Okay. I've got that 24 stuck in my head, I think. Sorry. That was my birthday age. That's why. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> Okay, and even though I have already turned this fabric over, um, this is the wrong side. And so I have my right sides together. I've cut out my lining and cut out my face 25 by 25. And I have put them together. But I have looked at my fabric um, to make sure that I have something centered. Um, and if you are working with a fabric and there's something that's really interesting um, at the top or something that you want to highlight at the bottom, um, just you know, think about that during the cutting process so that you can um, put the pattern uh, where you would like for it to go. Okay, any questions? Okay, right. make sure. See, I told you I could get off task here. All right, so I have gone ahead and I have uh, did some pinning along the bottom edge. And I set my pins back. And we can go ahead and pin. Now I know a lot of people out there um, use those wonder clips. Those are the hot thing on the market these days, I think. Anybody out there use those wonder clips? Nobody's saying anything yet, but I know there's a little time delay. You gotta give a chance to type it up. Okay, dokie. Well, I'm not even sure what a wonder clip is. I wonder what a clip is. Well, it's a little clip, and it kind of looks like a uh, close, no, uh, kind of like a clothespin in one respect. But they're little, and they pinch, and they hold the fabric together. And as you move along, you take them out. 
and they're great when you're working with things like blackout or your fabrics that you don't want to pierce and leave holes, oh, right? That makes, that makes sense. I don't know where else people would, would use them. But where, uh, where are people buying that? Uh, the uh, local fabric stores. Oh, okay. like Joanne's or something? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I have my fabric uh, face down pinned to my lining and I'm going to move it to the side because I want to show you all how I make my uh, template um, for the scallop. Okay, so basically what you're going to do is measure your measure your fabric, the, the bottom edge of your fabric. Okay, and I'll put this back here. And of course mine is 20, happens to be 25 inches. And a half inch on each side um, is my seam allowance. Okay, so for this purpose, um, I am going to, and you can use your grit too, I'm just going to measure, I'm just going to mark, and I've already done this, so you can see I'm going to mark my half inch, and I'm going to mark my half inch. So let's just say that you were you, you were uh, making a balance and it was you know uh, 58 inches whatever you you know just go ahead whatever it is and go ahead and mark uh, each side because that is your seam allowance. Then you're going to measure the distance between these two marks, and I know that mine happens to be 24 inches because I've cut it at 25 inches. Okay. Then I've taken a piece of buckram. Now, for all of you out there who have great free work rooms, um, probably have some pieces laying around. And it's nice and stiff, and it really makes a good template for um, what we're doing this evening. And it makes a great template for even when you're marking for things like grommets, you can make templates. And But anyway, and sometimes we have little pieces laying around, and we can't use them and we toss them, but don't toss them because you never know when you might want to use them. All right, so I have cut, get it down here. I have cut my buckram at um, 24 inches wide. I'm going to use my grid now. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, um, there's my piece there. I'm going to mark my grid, my template, use my grid to mark my template. I need to think about what I'm saying tonight. I'm hungry. I haven't eaten yet. <laughs> Joanne Winferding uh, says you can get a bucket full of those uh, e Wonder Clips from eBay or Amazon. Oh, really? And they're uh, much less expensive. Oh, wow. Do you, do you use them a lot? Oh, Joanne. Okay. So I'm going to take my grid, quilter's grid, and I'm going to lay it on my bucket. And I'm just going to go ahead and mark an inch and a half up. And you can use the ink pen on this. Whoop, sorry, I got, yeah, I got carried away there. It doesn't really matter. I don't want to hit my table, though. I want it nice and clean. Okay, one and a half inches. And then you're going to divide um, your piece by about eight inches. And I chose um, eight inches. It really works with what I'm doing with this little balance. Um, but you're just going to divide that by eight because that gives you a nice scallop. Now, if you want your scallops to be smaller, say six inches, then you'll divide it by six. If you want them to be four inches, God bless you because the smaller they get, the harder they are to stitch in and out. Uh, but you, you know, you choose how far apart you want your scallops. Mine, I want it eight inches. Now, here's a couple of things I want um, to make sure that you're aware of. Um, I always like having the scallops in, in an upward motion uh, versus, I mean, you can have them where they end on coming down. I don't know. I just like mine coming up, but you can, you can choose. But for tonight, we're going to end with them up. If you, end, if you end up coming down or I would think maybe the halfway, you wouldn't want like a third or a quarter. Of Ex one. Exactly. Exactly. So you're going to, because y yes, you're. Yep, you're, you're jumping ahead of me there, which is good. So you can. I mean, and that would look nice, too. All right. So anyway, I took 24 and divided it by 8. Um, and I have um, three um, different sections, which saw I have three scallops. So 
So what I've done is I put this up here and I marked my eight and then I marked my 16, just like that, okay. Now I wanna find the center of the scallops and I know that that is four and you can just bring this down and that is four and then 12, 12 yeah. Do the math for me. <laughs> Uh, 12, yeah, because 12 is my center. 20. You're the math man, man. You... I got a calculator over here. Oh, is that what it is? I had to take my shoes okay. off by the last one. <laughs> so then what you're going to do, you can actually, for me, I, I'm able to fold this in half because it's small. Now, how do you all make your um, scallops? I know there's a ton of ways that you could do it. I know there's probably little uh, devices that can help you um you know, make your scallops, but how do you do it? You know, sometimes pin bowls, right? Uh, the bottoms of them, the, some, you know, we use whatever is available, right? So anyway, I am going to, um, that's what I think, I'm going to fold it in half, and then I'm going to go ahead and take and fold this in half, and it should be right on my, my center four inch mark. And then I'm just going to keep folding it to get my my, my halves and quarters too. Okay, this one was folded so it's not playing nicely. Joanne says she uses those uh, uh, wonder clips all the time. Do you? I guess I better give them a try. I, it's, you know, one of those things teaching an old dog new tricks. You know, okay. So I've got all those pressed. Finger pressed. This is adhesive on one side so I couldn't press it really. All right, so now that I have that, I, I may be doing this the hard way, but it's just a self-taught kind of thing. So I'm going to pin and pin, like I said, there are more than one ways to skin a cat, right? Why would you want to? But, right. <laughs> okay, so I have all my point. I have my one and a half inches. I have my eight, eight well. and eight. Yes, the distance. And then I have my four, and then of course it goes into eight, eight again, and then the four. And then I'm going to take my beaded weight chain. I know I want to start in up position, and I know I'm going to go down, up, down. Now you don't have to go all the way across. Um, you know, you don't have to go all the way across because you really only need to do it, you know, shape. Uh, we can shape this one too. Let's just shape it. And you just kind of use your finger to round it out, you know, to get the shape that you want. And this just gives you a nice visual because sometimes, you know, we, we tend to, um, you know, make it more pointy than... Um, Round it, right? Okay, watch my time. Okay, but this just gives you a, just a good idea of how you want it to look, okay? I see that one, I want it to be a little bit rounder. And if you have something that's round um, at your fingertips, go ahead and put it up there and see if you can, but not everything will, you know, be just how you like it. Okay, I really like the center one. Okay, like I said, you only really need to have at least one of them. Okay, and you have to be careful whenever you go with the up motion. It oh, you know, you always want to kind of. It looks like you want to make it a little bit more pointy, but what happens when you try to get that cording in there? It it gets a little um, cattywampus. It just doesn't come out really pretty. Okay, all right, so. I could sit here all day and make it perfect, but right now, that's going to be it. You, I think you all get the, the gist of it, okay? And then you, you can use your pen on this or a pencil because it really doesn't make any difference. Um, this is just a template. And you're just going to mark it. I just 
Thank you, Mr. Wilkins. I guess nobody else uses those uh, Wonder Clips. Uh, just Joanne. Yeah. Well, I think they're becoming popular. I think we'll be seeing. Uh, some people don't even use pins. I. It depends on what I'm using. And then or, you, or maybe uh, everybody just wants to keep it a secret. No. A trade secret type thing. You know, yeah. I thought we were supposed to be an open, uh, we open are. shared we uh, are. community. But. Okay. So once you have one done, and I just put the pins there, so you can go up and down if you want to, um, just to get a visual of how it will look. But honestly, when it comes down to it, this is pretty much all you need. You can take it and fold it at that quarter. You can fold it at the half, too. And I'm going to line up. I can see my one-inch mark coming through here, my one-and-a-half-inch mark. Okay. And then you're just going to start cutting it. Cut it on the line. I'm going to go up to that line. Okay, so I went up to that line. Okay, now that we beat it weight chain took up some of the fat on the corner there. Okay, and so I have cut one. Now I'm going to fold it at that next mark. I'm going to line it up. And I think they will get the idea on that. You get it? I don't think you need to do all three Okay, of them. let me just show it. Okay. Calm down. And then I'm going to lay it and go ahead and cut. the line okay and then once you've got that cut you can just fold it over at the next point and you can keep cutting until you have your template okay any questions any comments anybody came in Don decided to jump on the wonder clip uh, hey Donna she said she uses the whole rip and fold snap tape oh that's a good idea too it makes it, and to the fabric makes it easier mm-hmm Okay, so next thing um, you're going to do is you're going to mark the bottom of your fabric with your fabric marker. No more pin. And we're going to mark it one and a half inches up. Just like this. And then make sure you come in um, that half inch on the side. Well, we know if we go like this, um, we have our half inch, and so our next, the point <coughs> will actually be, be <coughs> excuse me, eight and a half inches, because you know from coming the half an inch, you're gonna have your eight, and then you'll have your 16, and then you'll have what's left over here at the end, your other eight, your 24. Then you'll take your template, and you'll lay it down, and you'll see where you have your fold marks right here at your up point, you'll line them up right like that, and you'll also line the one inch mark up with the one inch mark on your template. And then you're gonna come in on the half inch and the half inch on each side. Because, you, because you're gonna be stitching down straight, um, this is on the sides here. Can you see I made the, the little um, horizontal line? Just like that on each side. Then we're just going to cut out our bottom, and I'm just going to pop some pins in there to hold it down, and oops. What kind of bottom would you all like to make? Would you think a flat bottom? Like I said, if you wanted a flat bottom, you don't have to do any of this. You can just leave it flat, and you'll cord the bottom. Or you can do it like a valance and do like a double um, one inch hem at the bottom or something. It doesn't matter, but I really like the cording on this. It just adds a little extra. I think Donna Cash, you were saying that you were going to make one. Is Donna Cash in here? Is that Donna? Yeah, she's, um, one, she's the other one who loves your wonder clips. Yep, yeah, she, you thought about making one for your porch.
But couldn't you see these, um, you know, in a, in a kid's room or, like I said, even in a, a office or something? There's a trash can under there, I promise. <laughs> Sharon was asking, uh, shouldn't you put that template a half inch up from the bottom? Um, no. Nope. Put it right on that bottom. Because it it's built in, it, it you'll just stitch the half inch. But I really like, um, you know, an inch and a half difference is, is good enough. If you, again, if you get, if, you, if your pleats are too small and you get, um, if they're too close together, and sometimes if they're, if they get a little bit, uh, the distance is higher, um, you just round that out. Um, I don't know if you can see this. In this area here, just make sure it's like, it's rounded if you can a little bit more because uh, it, 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 it can be difficult um, to stitch. It's one of those ask me how I know things. Okay, so that is all done. There. And when you pin along the bottom, unless you use wonder clips, <laughs> go ahead and pin to the back. Um, pin away from the edge um, because as you add your, I'm pinning a little extra because this is outdoor fabric and I don't want it to shift on me. But pin to the back, that way it doesn't run into your cordy. Alright, now, now for the cordy, um, you can easily use your template or the bottom of your balance and with your beaded weight chain or even um, a tape measure, a fabric tape measure, you can easily, you know, run it um, you know, up, you know, up and down the edge, the bottom edge, you know, to get um, uh, the yardage for your your cording. I mean, you know, a lot of times we'll measure 24 inches and add a little extra in. But if you don't want to waste your cord, or you don't want to be more accurate, you can do this. What did it end up being? Huh? Um, I don't. I did. I I already made the cord. <laughs> I did that ahead of time <laughs> so that we could keep it moving. Okay, we're almost there. Okay, so I I cut my cording at one and three quarters because that's going to give me uh, with a quarter inch, the quarter inch cotton cord, um, that is going to give me a half inch um, on uh, for, for my cording once I fold it in half, a half inch seam. Um, I did cut this on the bias. And I think all of you know what the bias means. You fold your fabric um, at a 45 degree angle. And I would not cut uh, cord on the straight because if you're going on a curve, it just doesn't bend nicely and it will crunch. The fabric just kind of bunches up on you. So do that on the bias. Okay, so now I am going to sew in um, my cording. And make sure I have the... Um, Right camera, I am going to use my home machine. Um, if I was, I'm not situated out in the workroom, I am, of course, in the studio. Um, if, if I was, I would use my um, my walking foot. But you can use a home machine with um, your zipper foot. Okay, so I'm just going to, where I, am I at here? Um, can you see that? I'm just going to cut that cord out a little bit. Uh, let me open this up. I'm going to open this up just a little bit. I know. Can they see that? No. Okay. Hang on a second. You're on your can uh, sewing machine. Okay. Sorry. All right. So I'm just going to take my cording and open up the stitching a little bit. Fold it back and cut the cord out. And I think I'll straighten that edge. It makes it easier to work with. And then I'm just going to push it in. Fold it in half. And then that just gives me a nice flat edge. Okay. And then I'm going to switch camera. And I'm 
I'm going to put my cording right there. Um, Got your seam allowance at, line? Yeah, I'm going to come in that half of an inch and I'm going to line it up right there. Okay, and you can stitch it down. Hang on, I got my foot on the wrong side. Okay. Now, like I said, if I was at, and you guys are going to let me sew it in wrong, aren't you? How many of you caught what I just did? <laughs> okay, I was doing it wrong. Okay, I'm going to lay it here, right there on that, uh, let's see if I can pick it up. Oh, you want the cord to be on the outside? Of yes, the I was sewing it wrong. I hate when it gets closer to the hour to quit. I kind of rush myself. Okay, I'm gonna just put it, let me move that over one more time. That was clue that I was sewing it wrong because I had my zipper foot on the wrong side. Okay, now I would normally, um, I would normally sew all of the pieces together at one time. I'm going to go ahead and just give my, um, we can't see this, what I'm doing here. Okay, I, I don't know if you can see that. I'm just going to go ahead and just put some little um, cuts, if you will, in my cording because I want it to just, smooth, you know, go around the, the scallops smoothly. Don't we call those relief cuts? Yes, that's what you would call them. <laughs> I don't know what I would do without you here tonight. Uh, you're not on the right one, I think. I'm not sure what came out. Oh, of you. yeah, I am on the right one. Stitching. Okay. So I'm going to stitch it onto the lining. Oh. If I was in the workroom uh, sewing this, um, I would stitch all of these pieces together at one time. I know um, some folks out there. Um, do not do that, that they prefer to do one layer at a time. But I find when you do that, uh, when you sew it all together at one time, it just, um, it looks nicer. So if you have mastered that, I would encourage you to do that. But if you haven't, go ahead and stitch it one layer at a time. And that way you can layer it. You can. And I'm just pushing my face out of the way. Normally you push the line out of the way. That's true. Uh -huh. I tell you, I think it's easier to sew it on my um, walking foot. No. Let's make a few more cuts. That's a relief. Oh, hey, Tamra, talented friend. Um, yeah. That is like, uh, she's the talented friend. Five call on the kettle black. Yes, yeah, she's incredible. Oh my gosh, look, I moved my needle over a little bit too much. Hang on. I didn't move my needle over. You are. Yeah. When you look in the dictionary under talent, we see your face, Tamara. <laughs> She's saying, don't stop, stop, don't stop. <laughs> she is incredible. She runs a school for kids, um, art school here in Raleigh, and it's, she's incredible. Okay, I'm at the end, and I'm gonna do the same thing that I did the other side. I'm gonna cut off what I don't need, and then I'm gonna open this up. So, what are you all working on this week? Anything good? Is anybody on vacation? If they were, why would they be here? Oh, that's true. <laughs> well, Did that's he? because they're loyal uh, fans, that's, that's why right. they were. Does anybody wish they were on vacation? 
Mm -hmm. Well, it's some 3D art, uh, uh, 13 to uh, 15 foot something in the air today. Did you? Woo. Okay, so I'm just gonna, um, How many made fabric bowls? That's what I want to know. Okay, so I'm just tucking that up. Again, doing the same, and I'm, I'm not going over that half inch. Okay, I'm stopping at that half inch before the half inch, I should say. I'm not going, the cord does not go to the end. It stops at the half inch mark. Okay. 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 All right. So now that that's sewn, you can now, um, you can now take it and just turn it over. I'm going to turn it over and you'll be able to see your stitching line and you can stitch uh, right along that line and even get a little bit closer if you want to. Any questions? And now um, you can actually start at the end of your fabric too. You can go right into the seam allowance. Oh, I think I just came unthread it. Luckily, this is a machine. It's a self-threaded machine. Amber said her mother uh, was one to taught her to sew, but she got tired of the bobbin round now. <laughs> Who is that? Tamara. Oh, Tamara. <laughs> Sharon says she hasn't seen the uh, fabric bowl episode yet. Oh, oh Sharon. Sure treat, Sharon. Oh, you can see it. Okay, so it's quicker on this side because you can see it. Stop and layer it. I tell you, I, I'd rather be sewing on my walking foot. I, I love my little home machine, but there's something about that walking foot. And Sharon, right? If you were here, we would be doing this all in one felt swoop, wouldn't we? When we were in uh, High Point, we actually got a... Um, uh, I got a servo motor for one of my machines, the like Glenn's sewing machines in her. And um, so I would be able to use one of my other sewing machines during a live event because you can, it, it's quiet and you can hear all of it. While I'm sewing this too, I just want to remind everybody that I have some classes coming up. I have a, a basic Roman shade class where you'll learn how to do a flat bottom Roman shade, a Roman shade with ribs, and a stationary Roman shade. And uh, let's see, that's coming up September uh, 9th, uh, September 27th through 29th. And then I have a Roman shade, the next level up class um, uh, uh, coming up. And that's where you will learn really high level. It's an advanced class, and you're going to do reverse mount Roman shades. You're going to um, uh, do reverse mount. We will do. You will have a motorized shade, and I am working on a new method to eliminate the pinholes from blackout. It's in testing stage. I'm almost done, and I promise when it's done. I will let you guys know. I'm excited about it, but I have a little, little bit more testing to do. But I'm, I, it's like, whoa, that's a no-brainer. So I'm excited, and I can't wait um, to share it with you all. And I'm just, I, I, I think this is going to be it. So I'm excited. But anyway, that class is going to be October 4th through 6th. And then um, many of you know um, Kathy Tucker. And she is going to be here October 24th, 20th. 27th doing a um, a class uh, called Des from designs to installation and she has taught this before I'm um, actually when I'm talking I'm gonna change out to my regular foot because I must sew my side seams and across the top hang on let me do this first then I'll I'll talk some more go and talk about her class too okay. um, so she's going to be here October 24th to 27th, and she is going to teach a class called From Design to Installation. And you'll be actually working with a real client. Now, I'm sewing my side seams half inch up, across the top, and down the other side. So you know that. 
Um, anyway, she um, is going to be teaching that class, and she's taught it at the school before, and everyone has raved about it. You'll be working with actual um, designer and an actual client. And it's great for anybody who's been in the business for a while or someone, a newbie. Um, it is, you know, going to be great. So all you have to do is go to my website, livewithsandrav.com, and sign up. Okay. Now, when I get close to the top, I'm going to measure down two inches. Because my pocket at the top is an inch and a half, and my seam allowance is an inch. So I'm just going to mark um, down two inches, and I'm going to back tack. Okay, I've already got it there. Um, this way I don't have to go back and um, open it up. Okay, so I'm gonna go two inches there. And while I'm here, I'm just gonna go, because I can reach it. I'm hurry, you guys, we're almost there. Okay. Oh. I didn't want to do this in two classes. Um, I probably didn't finish my sentence of what I was saying. Did I? Okay, then I'm going to go up the inch and a half and hit that last half inch and back that and go to the top. Okay, turn it. I'm going to go across the top and clip the thread. So if you guys are interested, I would love to have you here um, to learn more about shades. Sharon says, uh, I thought your top seam allowance was half inch. It is, and that's why I'm going across right now. Well, yeah, but you talked about the uh, two inches. Maybe yep. you need to explain that again. Okay, because my, my pocket at the top is an inch and a half, and my seam allowance is and my seam allowance is a half inch, so that's why I marked down the two inch, because that's where my pocket's going to be, and it, this way I don't have to go back and pick it out. Crocheting doilies. Oh my Does anybody God. know what a doily is? Sharon understands that. Okay, yeah. Thank you, though, Sharon, because some I might have confused a lot of other people, too. Okay. And she likes her servo motors. Yes, they're so quiet. It's incredible. Okay, I'm just going to clip that. And then I'm going to turn the corner. And now, one thing you have to do, and I almost forgot is you need to um, leave an opening. Okay, and then I'm going to come down to that two inch mark, do a little back pat, and so down. Where, where are you going to leave your opening at? I'm going to leave it. Yeah, I'm going to come down here a little bit, and then I'm going to do side. side, I'm sorry. You said top, I agreed. I, I was just asking, I don't know. Yeah, just on the I'm side. Watching. You can leave it at the top if you want to, but I think the side's better. How big of a hole are you leaving? Maybe three, four inches. Well, it depends on how large your, your balance is and, um, you know, how much fabric you have to, to pull through. Okay, and I stitched down that half inch uh, at the bottom, and then that way I ran my thread right up against, you know, remove the cord on the inside. You can see the bump. Okay, I'm going to clip my bottom, pull it through, and we'll be ready for the, um, we'll be ready for the, actually I'll do this for you guys, to turn it in pockets. So I'm just going to trim off some of that seam allowance at the bottom. Now, because we're at the end of the show, you know, getting close to the end of the show, normally I would probably pull it through and, and check it first to make sure nothing, uh, that everything looks good on the inside. But because we're at the, getting close to the end, I'm going to go ahead and just trim this so you can see. Because you can see how it puckers. And I'm just trimming it down a quarter, eighth of an inch, probably eighth of an inch. I'm not being very even, but if you're going to do it, be even. Especially if you're getting paid for it. That's right. Okay. Okay, pull out my pens. If I had wonder clips, I wouldn't be worried right now about pens. Any questions? Out there. No, that'd 
Okay. You're very thorough, apparently. All right. Hang with me because it's an important piece here. Okay. So I just, here's my opening, and I'm just going to pull everything through. And I'm not sure what it looks like because um, I didn't turn it pull through first. How do you go back and sew that opening? Um, you can hand stitch it. Uh, you can, if you have some fringe adhesive or do fix, or you can close it that way. Oh. Am I getting close to the out? Probably. Oh, I'm over. Okay, hang with me, girls and guys, whoever's out there. Okay, so you pull it. Now, I think I will tell you, I won't be here for two weeks. Um, we are going to be on vacation next week. And then the week after, um, I, will, I will be away for a family event. And then um, we'll be back. I'll be back in three weeks. And I'm not really sure um, if Mr. Kenny V gives me some of his old tape measures. I have a special project. Okay. Then I'm going to be using, oh, I forgot to pull a pin out. Again, if I had wonder clips, I wouldn't be worried right about now. <laughs> you wouldn't be wondering what happened? I wouldn't be wondering about where those pins were. Okay. Uh, Sharon uh, says, look like you got yourself a Fitbit. I did. I love these things. Ken got one for his birthday, too. Uh, they talk to you during the day, don't they? They say things like, you ready to walk? <laughs> you ready to go? Okay. Give me 25. Give me 25. I know. They're incredible. And I love that they give us our text messages in our phone call. Okay. Oh, yeah. That's so. Okay. So, um, now that we have it, this is what happened. It didn't turn out too bad. Did it. And so you give it a nice little pressing all the way around. And whenever I press, um, a lot of times what I like to do is pull fabric over like this but make sure it's not bunched up along the bottom make sure it's smooth and give it a little press along the edge and so when you fold it it will fold nicely okay and then the next um, two things that you will do and I will do it if you guys have time I will tell you what I'm going to do and if you want to hang out with me we will do it if not you need to go I understand um, we are going to take your grid and we are going to put this at the bottom right along the edge. Can you see that? Right along the edge. And remember I said that your bottom area is six inches. Now you may want to make one that's four inches or five inches. You choose. Um, and you're just going to mark that six and mark with a fabric marker that disappears of course and then you're going to move up an uh, inch and a half inch and a half mark again for your now this is your marking for your pocket I would place some pins because this can shift especially if you're making a larger one how would you wonder clip that in the middle? We wouldn't. I oh. don't think we would have to. We wouldn't really want to wonder about that. Okay. I was just wondering how wonderful they were. Okay. So. Margo decided to join. Hey, Margo! You're my cousin. And um, I think I'm going to have Margo in. I Closer to the holidays, I want to have a project that has something to do with family. And I know exactly what I want to do, and it would be wonderful if you came on with me. Oh, she says she does like. So. She does. <laughs> <I> did. <laughs> <laughs> so think about that. I'm gonna poke you when it comes time. Okay. So I've done some pinning here, and then of course what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch across these two lines, and then I'm going to come to the top. And of course, I'm going to, I didn't I don't have my iron, but I'm going to go like this and make sure that it's not folded. And I'm just going to press the seam flat, like press it 
then that gives you a nice crisp top. And I'm gonna lay it down here. And then you're gonna tuck in these side, the top edges. Uh, and if you need to um, put a little adhesive up underneath there before you turn it, you can. Okay, but you poke them out nicely. And then you're gonna take your grid. And, and of course, I would iron this first. We're over the hour, so um, else I would iron it. But we have one and a half inches. If your pocket needs to be larger, you make it larger. But you mark Maybe it. Maybe you want to do a continental rod. That's, yeah, well, whatever you want to do. Could be sharing it. And you pin. That would sure be nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then again, of course, you will stitch across here. Now, one more step. I want to make sure that I have equal distance here. So I'm going to take my tape measure, because sometimes you can get a little off, maybe. And I have from that top of that mark of my pocket there to here. And I have, oh, it says about 14 three quarters. And I haven't pressed it, so it can be off. And it's, it's the same on this side as well. So we're good. So that our pocket, we're not going to have a wonky, you know, lopsided bottom. So you want to check those measurements and adjust if you need to. So like I said, I am going to stitch across the top for my pocket and I'm going to stitch these two lines here and then I will go down and I will open up um, those little sides so that I can put my rod through. I don't think I need to do that for you. I think that um, you understand how to do that. If anybody wants me to, I will if you want to wait around. If not, um, we will close it down for tonight. But uh, I just want to thank everyone for being here. I enjoy you all coming each week. And I would like to see pictures um, of your awning uh, and those fabric bowls and those <laughs> vintage smock yeah. pillows. You're going to scare them away with all that mandatory stuff. No, I won't. Okay. Let me take a peek and see it's real quick before I go. What's that? Let me say hello to anybody before I go. Sure what is anybody saying? Do they want me to stitch it or whatever? Yeah, hey, Gina, I'm in. It. Okay, good. Um, and Tamara, okay. Oh, how does it hang on the wall? Did you miss that, Sharon? Okay, hang on. Let me. Um, so, uh, Tamara, yes, Tamara, I had you confused with somebody else. Yes, we went to high school together. I mean, yes, you are talented too. Um, you're, uh, let's see, how does it hang on the wall? Okay, let me show you. I'm going to show you the finished one real quick. Hang in there. For, um, Hang in there. You making jokes? That's okay, Sharon. And doing because Joanne said that was a good question too. I'm going to move over, honey. Can you come over here, sure. Mr. Kenny V, and um, help me? Hang on I'm one not, second. I'm not camera worthy. I've been working. Well, you need to come around the other way. It's impossible with all your booby traps. Okay. Hang on. Here's the finished one. Oh, be careful. You got more booby traps over here too? No. Let's go with my keys. Okay, so there you go. Here is the one. And at the top, um, if you're going to, let me move this over a little bit. If this is going to be um, installed between two walls, shower stall, bookcases, kitchen cabinets, then you will use tension rods. You have your pocket at the top and you will use tension rods so that it will you know, push between the wall and then you will, right here where your pocket is, you'll insert a tension rod there as well. If you are going to hang it on a window uh, that doesn't, you know, it's not enclosed, then you can use a uh, utility rod. You see up here I have a little white utility rod that just goes right on the wall. Um, and this one has like about an inch and a half projection, but you can get them to where they're, they're, they just go right up to the, um, they go right up to uh, the wall. Um, and then down here, you still need a rod that goes through here. I actually happen to have, I've left a tension rod in this pocket because if you don't, they'll, they will sag in the center. So you can use a dowel or a, a, you know some sort of rod that will go all the way through. And if you make your pocket two inches here instead of the inch and a half, um, you can use the Home Depot yardsticks 
because they make a nice flat, um, nice flat. They fit into a nice two inch pocket. They fit in nicely in a two inch pocket. Okay. Uh, but if not, you can use some sort of a dowel or rod. And then you can use um, a bookcase uh, brackets. Here, we're going to turn it around so you can see. Because you need something for your projection. Okay. And so. Just push that corner. Huh? Okay. Push that corner. So then, can you see on the end here, we have used um, brackets that are for like bookcases or shelves. And it gives you the projection. So it is open on the sides. But it's still, if, if it, there's one that's decorative, of course you take the, the label off of it, um, it, it's just, it can be a really nice element as well. Okay, hope that helps. Um, and then what holds the bottom out? Okay, so the, um, I'm reading the comments now. Um, so the bottom, of course, if it's a tension rod. You might not have seen it by now. Huh? That's right, I know. If it's the, if it's a tension rod, then the, of course, a rod will hold the bottom out, and if you're putting it in an enclosed area, a, t a shower, t a shower stall, like I said, then this pre this um, bottom tension rod will come forward, and the top tension rod goes back at an angle, and that's what gives you that awning look in a tub area, and it's really really cute, and it also gives you the awning look if it's in over a kitchen sink or like I said any any encased area push that top rod back and then the, the bottom rod comes forward and then you, you get that um, a frame kind of a look and then the bottom just kind of um, hangs down and then if it's then the brackets uh, will hold it out and I went ahead just for tonight and the brackets have little holes in the front so I just um, stitched a piece of this little micro cord on there for tonight just to hold it. I didn't cut it off, but you would certainly finish it off nicely. But you can see how it just holds it out. And um, you can also, like I said earlier, uh, you can um, also uh, put a grommet in here and buy those flag holders. Because when you install those flag holders, they kind of go... They kind of they kind of go in there like at an angle, and so you if you had a grommet you could put that pole right through the grommet and take the end of the uh, flag pole. It's usually decorative, and you can pop that back on the top. I haven't tried that yet, but I think others have, and it works really well. Now, um, someone asked me about how do you attach the bracket at the bottom. Well, the bracket is attached to the wall. Let me see if I can pull that up. And um, there is a screw down at the bottom, and then there's a screw right up in here. And I have a big, let me show you. Here's another, it's, here's a big bracket. Because you go to Home Depot or Lowe's or a lot of different places, and you can get all size and shapes and color brackets. And as you can see, they help, some of them have holes in the top, and they have holes along the, the back. And you can, um, can you see that? Is that you're trying to see? There you go. And you can um, you can use them either way. This, of course, would have a short, not a very uh, long projection. And this one here, if you turned it this way, you would have a much um, a, a much larger projection coming out from your wall. So does that help? Hope that all that makes sense. Um, and Ruth, yeah, what happens if you have a window about 90 inches wide? Um, you can still make it. Um, I think the challenge would be, I guess, for your top rod. But you can get, I think you can get those rods with extensions in them. And you, a utility rod or those sash rods that are almost fit right up against the wall. And you can uh, get center braces for them as well. And then on the bottom, you may want to do a threaded rod, uh, you know, because you can get those longer. Yes, yes, you can. I don't know how wide you can get a tension rod. Mm -hmm. you know, it's going to sag at some point. Exactly, yes. And yes, you can get those threaded rods at um, the lo local hardware stores. Home Depot. At Home Depot and all that, because, <laughs> Ken is Home Depot, um, because they're, they're pretty firm. 
Um, and if you had to, uh, sometimes if you're going to put it over a larger window anyway, there might be some breaks in the in you know window. If you have a triple window, you might have some molding in between that you can um, place some brackets exactly. there if you have to to hold out the center. Yeah. Um, and then somebody asked, um, how is it attached to the bracket at the bottom? Um, I stitched some uh, micro cord in here, or, or you can, and like I said, there's a hole in the bracket. Like if you can see here, there's a hole at the tip of the bracket. And you can stitch the micro cord onto the back of your shade and then run the cord through here. You can Velcro it. Uh, what else could you do? I'm thinking. But, it, I, you know, I think if you just go through the holes and then if you had the rod going through here, it really it's, it was holding this nicely, even though it's small. Um, yes, so I, I tied the shade to the end of the bracket. Uh -huh. Exactly. Yeah. You're welcome, Joanne. Oh, thank, actually, you want, you want to know how the bottom of the treatment was attached to the front of the bracket. But I see the strings. Okay, good, good. Glad that makes sense. <laughs> when I make something, I think everybody knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> but anyway. Okay, everyone. We are we are really past the hour tonight. But thank you for joining in. And, you know, we appreciate each and every one of you. And like I said, go to my website, livewithsandreview.com, if you're interested in the classes. And if not, we will see you all in three weeks. And, and you're going to give me a tape measure, right? Sure. Okay, so the next project has something to do with the tape measure. And I'm going to cut it up. So, what? Oh, yes. So give me a one you don't want. <laughs> okay, everyone. Have a good night. Yeah, I know. I need to make a shade. That's coming, too. <laughs> okay. Good night, everyone.